Hi friends, welcome to my channel. So in this video, we are going to see the first method of amortized analysis, that is the aggregate method. Uh, if you have not seen the previous video, uh, I recommend you to watch the previous video where I have introduced amortized analysis. From this video onwards, I am going to talk about the different types of amortized analysis. And uh, right now, let's talk about the first method, that is the aggregate method. Now, as it is written over here, aggregate method is, is basically the most simplest method of amortized analysis. And the reason why I am saying this is because it is hidden in the formula of um, uh, aggregate method in which it says that the amortized cost per operation is equal to the total cost of all the operations divided by the number of operations. Very uh, easy, right? So now, uh, for each and every method, aggregate method, accounting method and potential method, I'm going to uh, explain them with the help of this example of dynamic tables. So for those of you who don't know dynamic tables, so basically dynamic tables is a data structure. You can consider it as a dynamic array in which if we, we keep on inserting elements, okay, and suppose here uh, this is the first insert. We have inserted the first element, okay, the initial size of the dynamic table was zero. So we inserted the first element, uh, now the size is 1. Uh, in the second insert, uh, what happens is that now there is an overflow. The size was, the maximum size of the dynamic array was 1. So now uh, what we do is that we copy actually this element that was already in the array and we double the size of the dynamic array. So now the size has increased from 1 to 2, right? Now we do the third insert. In the third insert, again there is an overflow that the size is 2, but you are trying to in include the third element. So in such a case, again the size doubles from here the size was 2, now here the size becomes 4, right? Uh, and we insert the third element. So that is what we have done over here. In the case of the fourth insert, right, this fourth insert, uh, there is no overflow because there is already a space left, so we insert the fourth element. But when we want to insert the fifth element, there is again an overflow. So we double the size of the dynamic array and uh, now the size is from 4, from 4, the size has changed to 8 and we insert the fifth element. So this is how the dynamic table works. Every time there is an overflow, uh, the size of the dynamic array will actually double, right? So now we need to actually find out the um, uh, asymptotic time complexity of doing these inserts in the dynamic table, right? So now, uh, if we find out the asymptotic time complexity, so uh, now what is the worst case time complexity for a single insert, right? Uh, this is what we need to find out. So for a single insert, as you can see in all these cases, this case and this case, uh, that for a single insert, what we had to do is that we had to copy the previous elements all those element and insert the new element. So the co time complexity in such a case is order of n, right? Wherever, whenever there is an overflow, the time complexity is order of n. So this is my worst case, which happens in case of overflow, right? Now, what is the worst case time complexity for n insertions? So of course, we will multiply the number of insertions into the worst case time complexity for a single insertion. So this will be n into order of n, that is order of n square. Uh, this is where we found out the asymptotic time complexity, right? But why don't we try to find out the amortized time complexity with the help of our aggregate method for this dynamic tables? So for that, in order to check your understanding of dynamic tables, here I have built a table already. Let us try to fill it, help of uh, the properties of dynamic tables, right? So now, uh, this i over here denotes the number of insertion, like this is the first in insertion, second insertion, it goes on up to the 16th insertion. Uh, size of the i denotes the size of the dynamic table at that particular i-th insertion, right? So when I uh, say size of 4, that means what is the size of my dynamic table at the fourth insertion? And cost of i over here denotes what will be the cost of the ith insertion. Like if I uh, tell you, uh, if I ask you cost of 7, you will, uh, that will actually mean what is the cost of the 7th insertion, right? So now over here, 
if in the first insertion the size of the dynamic table is 1 as you can already see over there and in the second in insertion the size of the dynamic table will be 2 and in the third insertion uh, because here there will be an overflow as I said in this case over here so that is why the size will actually double it will not be 3 it will double so this will be 4 in the fourth insertion no overflow the size will total size of the dynamic array will remain same 4 but in the fifth insertion the size of the dynamic table because of the overflow it will actually double from 4 to 8 in the sixth insertion again there is no overflow so I'll fill it uh, now 8 now here again there is an overflow the, so the size will double from 8 to 16 so again there are no uh, basically there are no uh, overflows so the size will remain same so it will remain same over here and in the case of 17 insertion the uh, size of the dynamic table would have been from 16 to 32 so now we have to find out the cost of each insertion right so for the first insertion uh, the cost will remain 1 because only we are doing one insert for the second insertion the cost will actually become 2 the reason is we are actually uh, copying the first element that was already in the dynamic table and then inserting the new element so the size becomes 2 in the third insertion the size will actually be 3 the reason is uh, we are actually copying the first two elements and then inserting the new element but in the fourth insertion the size will just be 1 because there is no overflow we are just adding the new element for the fifth insertion the size will be uh, the previous elements that are in the dynamic table so until now four elements are there plus the new element that we are inserting so the size will be 5. For the uh, sixth element the size uh, will be actually 1 because there is no overflow 7th also same 8th also same but for the eighth element the size will be actually 9 because the eight previous elements and the, this new element so 8 plus 1 9 this will be 1 1 1 so all of these will be 1. So now if we actually want to summarize this table we can write it is in this way cost of ith insertion is equal to i when i minus 1 is an exact power of 2 ok. So you can identify over here actually the uh, i over here is 5 so when i minus 1 4 is exact power of 2 in this case in the same way here we are getting the cost as i uh, that is 9 itself cost of i is equal to i and again you can see over here the i minus 1 or 8 is an exact power of 2 so this is how we summarize this table or else the cost will be 1 or else you can see in the rest of the places the cost is 1 uh, otherwise so now if we want to find out the cost of n insertions we will do a summation of i is equal to 1 to n cost of i right so this is basically this is the same thing cost of i so over here this will be n because we are considering that every uh, insertion is taking one one unit of time for the time being plus summation of j is equal to 0 to j is equal to log of n minus 1 I want you to tell me in the comments that why I am taking j 0 as the lower bound and uh, n log of n minus 1 as the upper bound and this will be 2 of j. So if you look at this series uh, this is already n but if you look at this series it will be something like this from 2 of 0 plus 2 of 1 up till 2 of log of n minus 1. So uh, the sum of this series is basically uh, as you might already have learned the sum of this series is calculated in this way a into r of n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 in this case a is 2 raised to 0 or 1 and r is 2 and n the total number of elements is uh, log of n minus 1 plus 1 element so log of n minus 1 plus 1 element minus 1 divided by as we, uh, over here r is 2 so over here the denominator will be 1 so this is again a rough calculation that I am doing we can write this one over here as log of 2 or 2 by 2 so this will be log of n minus 1 plus log of 2 by 2 so this will finally be this is finally going to be as log of 2 raised to n minus 1 right logarithmic properties 
this summation will finally come out as n plus 2 into n minus 1. So this is something 3n minus 2, right? So this is less than uh, 3n or you can also call it as order of n. So this is the cost of n insertions in a dynamic table if we find it out with the help of aggregate method and uh, also to find out the cost of single insertion with the help of aggregate method with the help of that formula. So the total cost for n insertions is order of n divided by the number of insertions is n. So the total cost is order of 1 or constant. So I request you to actually keep in mind this uh, derivation that we have done in case of asymptotic time complexity and this derivation what we have done for amortized time complexity because this will be very useful when we see uh, when we do the same problem of dynamic tables with the help of different methods like uh, accounting method and pot potential method in the later on videos. So as you can see for the asymptotic method gave us the time complexity of order of n square for n insertions. Whereas the amortized method gave us the time complexity of order of n uh, when we use the aggregate method to solve the same problem. That's all for this video. In the next video, we will see the accounting method.